everybody, it's Sam the Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm back with another fun fold card. This one is a larger style of the shadow box card I made last year, and this is inspired by Jennifer Maguire. So I've done this exact style before, but I haven't done it in five by seven. But what I like about this one is I've added the floating kind of pop-up element that Jennifer does in her tutorial, and I just thought that would work really great with these dies. So here is the card. You can see inside there, this folds completely flat, so it will fit in a 5x7 envelope. But when you pull the sides out, your little creatures inside move. How cool is that? So, some of you that remember this card, you'll recognise that one. And all I'd done with it was just had it like this, and it just stands up perfectly. But by just adding these acetate strips inside, it completely changes the style and it works great for any kind of dies that you've got where you've got a whole scene. So these dies here, I've got all these, you know, the jellyfish, the, the other fish, the mermaid. You can have lots of things moving inside it. I've just kept the two. And then I've got the wonderful shells, the mermaid, these dies here, and then the lovely title there, You're mer Amazing. So how cool is it? I think it's really, really good. Just by doing that with it, I, you know, Again, it just shows how other people can inspire you to just, you know, add that extra to cards and then it completely changes them again. So I will link in my other tutorial for the smaller version because you may choose that you don't want to do five by seven, but this will work with the smaller style that I give you in that um, tutorial as well. Um, and yeah, let's get making it. Okay, so to make this card, I've already gone and die cut all of my um, pieces that I'm going to use. This is the set here. This is Under the Sea by First Edition. Um, and they're really fun. I'm going to do, I might do the bubbles, I'm not sure. Um, I might just stamp some bubbles, but I've done all the others, so you can see here. So there's all the ones that I've die cut. I've layered them up, I've done this one here, the jellyfish, I actually die cut on vellum first and then die cut it again and stuck the top on. So I thought the vellum worked really well to give it that kind of, you know, see-through, translucent look. Um, there's my mermaid, again layered her up, die cut her lots of different times just to give her all those different colours and stuff and then I've done two of the shells, I might use both, I'm not sure I've done the fish, seahorse, <laughs> forgot the name then and the warhol, um, he's really cute as well you can see I've just put the silver on the horn there is that what it would be called? horn? anyway and then there's the your amazing I love that yeah and then for the seaweed I was looking I didn't really have anything that I liked but then I looked through the other first edition set that I've got and this is the woodland and I actually thought that that leaf there in the right colors and in the right scene could actually look like seaweed so I die cut a few in the different this is using the rainbow um, holographic um, mirrored cardstock, I can't remember the exact name, it's rainbow anyway and I'll share the links but if you put a few of them together you know against the white you imagine that's like on the seabed like so and you've got you know your seahorse and stuff around it I thought that looked quite good so that's what I'm going to be using there so I've already gone ahead and die cut all of that and then you're going to need two pieces of seven by seven cardstock so I've got one in this nice kind of light aqua color and then I've got one in the white here so really simple scoring and you want to score at one and six and then flip the cardstock over and score at half and six and a half okay so by flipping it over like I always say that will allow us to be able to fold it in opposite directions so so once you've done those score lines, just flip it back to the original way. So again, with this one here, this is my top, so I'm scoring it at one, or my front, and six. Then flip it over and score at half an inch and six and a half, and then flip it back again. All right, and that's where we'll be with both of them. So just get that all done. Okay, so then you want to decide, I'm having this aqua as my back piece because it's the colour of the sea and the white is going to be the front of the card. So with this white piece here, I'm bringing in my trusty tonic oval um, dies here and I'm going to use the largest two all right so what you're going to do is with the smallest of the two I'm going to pop that in here and the larger one I'm going to cut from a piece of matching cardstock to match the back here and again with that and create a little frame and that's going to go on the outside and I just thought that looked nice against the white so you want to line this up now you might want it nearer the top you might want to put your message at the bottom if you're not using the same as what I've got I'm going to bring it a little bit further down to the top because this is going to be up here 
and I want it to kind of just hang slightly over the oval. So play around with whatever your topper is that you're using or your, you know, your message and just, you know, get it where you want to. I'm probably going to put some string or some embellishment there or maybe some bows. I'm not sure yet. So I can remove that now because I think I've got that roughly where I need it. And I've just got some washi tape here. And because I'm not keeping the middle circle, I'm going to stick my washi on the metal and then into the bit that I don't want. But if you stick it on that side and it rips, then that's the card and you're going to ruin your project. So, you know, if you are using a washi tape, always stick it on the card stock that you're not going to use. Now, in order to fit this through my die cutting machine, what I'm actually going to do is check I've got the right fold. Yeah, I'm going to fold. These are already going to fold out. So I'm going to lift these two up. Because I'm going to burnish these anyway, like so. And I'm going to pop it through my dye machine. Now I do have the large tattered lace, but I just can't be bothered to get it out. So I'm going to just stick with my smaller one. And that way, because this is six inches wide, this card will fit in perfectly there. Okay, so I'm going to also add some coffee paper just to protect the white card stock in case there's any markings or anything on my top plate. And all this would do would just really embed those score lines, so as long as you do it in the right way or direction, then it won't damage the card. So now I can take that out and remove that one. And then I can take those back out, because that's the way they're going to be anyway. And then these score lines here, they're going to go... Down. So this is a valley, your outer ones, they're both sticking up, so they're creating a valley these score lines you want to make as a, as a mountain. Okay, like so. And one other thing, you want to make sure that you don't see them when you fold them in because that's how it's going to go in our envelope and be that five by seven size. So now you can see how we've got our card front coming together. Then the back piece, all you have to do with this one is you're going to fold it the same way. So top ones are going to be mountains, well the, the, sorry, the inner score lines are mountains and then the outer ones are valleys and because of the way you scored you shouldn't get any cracking. So again that's the shape that you want. So then that one is going to go on the back here creating our card and then you imagine I'm going to have this up here and straight away you can see how nice it's all going to look and how it's coming together. So, going back to our oval, keep those two actually, because I just want to create my frame. This is entirely up to you, you might, want not, you might not want to do the frame, but I'm going to pop that one in and I'm going to do these both at the same time. Some people would like to do them separately, so do your outer one first, um, but I'm going to run them through at the same time and just stick them together with washi. Um, you just want to make sure you've got an even centre ring there. Just moving it around a little bit. If it's a little bit out, it's not the end of the world. Now all I'm keeping with this is that tiny frame that's going to be in between these two dies. So I'm just going to run that through. Okay, and then this is what I want. So just a small little frame. That's the largest of those ovals. So I mean you could go up even larger if you wanted to and if you've got bigger... You know, it depends what window you're doing. You might not be doing a, a kind of underwater theme like me. You might have a square window. It's entirely up to you. But they're great now to keep. I could do something creative with those and use them for toppers on another card. But this is all I want. <laughs> so again, you can see now that is going to go perfectly on the front there. And it just adds a little bit more to the card. Okay, so I want to get that stuck down. And I'm just going to... Do I want to just go around with it directly on there? No, I'm going to pop it on my back of my hand again because I don't want that much glue on there. So I'm just putting a thin, even layer on the back of my hand. I know lots of you like this. And then I'm just going to dab that around. It doesn't need a lot of glue to stick this down. There's a clear drying glue, so it doesn't matter if there are any bits that are oozing over. And then because it's an oval, I'm going to have to, and I've got that detailed inside piece. I just need to move it around till I've got it in place. Okay, so now we want to start building the card. So I'm going to add some of my red tape 
flip this over and you want to add tape to the two outer sides there. And again on this piece. Now if you're not putting anything in between, if you're not using the acetate, then you won't need to put tape on both sides. You can just stick that directly onto this. But because I'm going to have little bits of acetate in between, I just want to make sure it's going to be nice and strong. So I'm just going to make sure those air bubbles are out. Okay, so now you want to start deciding where you want everything to go. Okay, so I always talk about saving the packaging um, from your dies. So when I received all these dies from Trimcraft, I still haven't got around to cutting it all yet, but this is the acetate. And on the backs, so you've got whole sheets here of incredibly strong acetate. So this is the one here for the, the baby themed one. So I'm just gonna grab my scissors and just cut as close to the, the edge. I'm gonna you know shape it better with my trimmer, but I will save much of this inside piece here like so I mean that's perfect for shakers it's in perfect condition it's got no markings or anything on it and then on the front I can still save all that that sticker I don't think maybe it does I could probably get it off anyway but I'm not too worried because I'm gonna have oh no I think it will actually I don't think they've used yeah I could probably soak it off and then I've got a nice window there but alternatively what you could also do is if you cut slightly down from the raised part that could be a shaker whole piece and you could put your glue around this bit and you've got a massive window so again keep all of your packaging Re recycle so I've got these pieces here and with my trimmer it's entirely up to you really how you want these I'm just going to shape this a bit better so it's easier to cut Okay, so I've got a nice shaped piece there. Now what we want to do is we're going to stick them on either the, the left or the right hand side and then they're going to come in. So depending on what little kind of critter you're going to have on the end, so for example this jellyfish, you know, I don't know where I want it yet. So what I'm going to just do to prepare them is on the short side here, so this measures four and three quarters, I'm going to cut these strips to half an inch. So, so I've just got these strips here. Okay, you can just make it out there. So I'm just gonna cut a few, I don't want loads. Okay, so I'll add that to all my other acetate and then I've got my three strips here. So we can start building our scene. So if you wanna go and, you know, stamp something here or if you've got, I'm, I'm gonna stick the bubbles in now, I'm not gonna stamp them because this is like a slightly textured cardstock and I just think it'd be nice to have them die cut rather than stamped. But you wanna start creating your scene from you know how people see it when they look through the window. So I want to have some of my seaweed. So I'm going to have some of it kind of stuck on the back here, kind of crawling up, and I'm going to have some of it coming down from the top and kind of around the sides. And keep popping your window over so you can see how that's going to look. So that is all going to be stuck to the very, very back of the card, and then I'm going to have some of it around the front, so you can see here. So I'm going to stick that on the inside and I'll probably have this piece, for example, coming down but stuck on the back side of my front piece. You're creating different layers. So you're going to have this top layer, this bottom layer, and then your acetate is going to be your middle layer. And that's where I'm going to have some of my moving pieces. So like I said with the jellyfish, I will probably shape that acetate and just curve it so it's got the same curve as the jellyfish so you don't see it but that will sit there and then it's going to be stuck in between those two pieces of red tape so it will float and move when we work that card so I'm going to stick this background bit down first
Okay, so you can see there I've started to build up my scene. So there's my mermaid with some seaweed and the shell, and I've stuck the your I'm amazing. I almost stuck it all upside down. You probably saw me flip it around, and then there's the inside there. So now when that sits over the top, I hope you agree, but that looks really lovely, and I just love that. Again, this cardstock just works so great for all these kind of whimsical cards. So then I have trimmed, like I said, the acetate in half. So I've got it now a quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to stick each of my little two here. I'm just going to have the jellyfish and this fish. I'm not sure I'm going to add this one today. And I'm probably going to change the colour of that and just stick him directly onto the back. So he is actually just permanently there and doesn't move. Um, I just don't think there's enough room in the back there to, to, add, to have them all. So I'm just adding a tiny bit of red tape there just to the end. Okay, you can just make it out there. And then just take the backing off of that. Fish right over it. So you don't want to see the acetate, you know, anywhere over the other side of the fish, just on one side. Okay, you can see where it's stuck in the back there. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same on this one here. Okay, so there's my jellyfish. So next, you want to, I've just realised I've done that one the wrong way. So that one's going to be that side. I'm going to have the jellyfish. I need to turn it. So I'm just going to take that off because it's acetate. I want this one on this side. So like that. Okay, so I've got one that way and one that way. So that when we pull it, that's how it will create. So I'm going to have that one floating there and then the fish kind of there. So I'm going to stick on the back of this one. So look, when you move it, you want to see, you can see how far, see it's going to go up to her head. I don't want it to go that close to her head. I'm going to be there so that when it pulls out, it goes to there. Okay, so it will move half an inch because that's the fold. So it's going to be there. And then when you pull that side out to there, you're sticking it on this piece here. So I'm holding that with my finger because that's exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to just trim that acetate. So now I know I'm going to take the backing off of this whole one. So now I know I've got the right length, just getting it at the right height. So there. So when it goes in and then you pull it out. In, pull it out. Okay, so that's that one. And then with this one here I'm going to take the backing off is going to be on the other side and I've got all my background seen there as well but he I want him to be up there it doesn't really matter with him because he's just going to move within that area so I'm going to go and stick him like that and then I can just trim that off okay like so, and then I'm going to add a little bit of double-sided tape just over the tops of that acetate there where I stuck them down. Don't worry if they're sticking up a little bit at the minute, it's because we've not stuck the whole card together. So decide how much you want to have stuck down and you know how many bits of acetate you're going to have floating around because once you stick the sides down you won't be able to add well, you can still add some more, but obviously it won't be hidden like these ones will be. Okay, so you can see now how they are moving around. Looks really cool. Okay, so next you want to stick this down. I'm going to do one side at a time. I just realised I put double-sided tape on this anyway, so it didn't, wouldn't have mattered. So I'm going to bring this side up first and focus on the top and stick those together and just work it all the way down to the bottom like so and then fold it all in you may want to re-burnish it okay so everything's in place now so when you pull out the sides everything moves and how cool does that look so now i've got those bits where I want them I've just gone and die cut the little bubbles in vellum because I just thought that would give it a nice little subtle 
bubble look. So I'm going to have to try and carefully use my tweezers. I'm just going to dab the smallest bit of glue. I actually don't mind if you see it because I think it will just add to the effect. But I'm going to put one there. So let's just pop a little bit of glue there. Like so, if I can just bring it up, you can just see them in there. Again, it's one of those cards that it's so much nicer in, in like real life, but that just adds a little bit of something there as well. Now looking at it, I'm not sure if I want to add anything more to it. I thought I might put some something up there, but I quite like that it's quite plain on the front because there's so much going on in the centre. So I'd love to know what you think, but there you have it. So it all folds like that. So that's how you'll pop it in the envelopes. It's five by seven size. And then that person will pull it out and they'll see it move. And I just think that looks so cool. Yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how this has come out. And I think it's super fun. It will work for so many scenes. So, so you know, if you don't have this one, just see what other kind of nice sets that you've got and just have some fun with it because it is really good to do. And it's not that hard. It's just getting these bits in that I guess are a little bit fiddly, but the actual main shell of it all is dead easy. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Bye.